So we're going to start here with Turn On The Lights. That's the name of this. This message today is about turning on the lights. And in Ephesians, which we read in verse 14, it says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. When I think about waking up, and I think about the lights, and I think about how I like to get woken up. Well, first of all, I kind of get up, so I just get up naturally. But if someone's waking me up, I want them to be real gentle and calm and just give me a tap. And that will pretty much wake me up, right? Well, there's other people that's not going to wake you up. I know with uh, my boys, my most unfavorite thing about parenting was waking them up for school. I hated it. Hated it, hated it, because they never wanted to get up. One did. The, the other two, forget it. So what I'd have to do, I'd start real gentle. Hi, honey, time to get up. And then five minutes later, I'd come back up the stairs. He's not up. Okay, you really need to get up. And then I'd be turning the lights on. And by the end of it, senior year, I learned to throw water on him. And by throwing water on him, it would finally work. I go, why didn't I think of that at the very beginning? <laughs> Sometimes people have a hard time waking up. Just the thought of waking up. And if we flick on the lights, that's the number one thing. You don't want the light on. Can you just turn the light off? I have to sleep in complete dark. I'm one of those. All the lights have to be off. I don't like any lights on. And so when we think about this, and I think about this scripture, I think that the Lord is just kind of going to shake and say, hey, wake up. And depending on our personality and where we're at in God and what he's speaking to us, it's either going to be really easy and we're going to be one of those, honey, time to wake up. And you get up, or we're going to have to throw some water on you to wake you up and to get your attention. And this is what this scripture is, says, wake up. Why? Because we're sleeping. God wants to wake us up. And I love this. He says Christ is our light. Christ is, will give you this light. And he says, for you were once in darkness, but now you are light. In the, uh, in the Lord, walk as children of light. And I put over this, I'm not who I used to be. I think about this, there's a time in our uh, life where the Lord just comes to us, right? We don't know about him, and then all of a sudden we do know about him. And I think been thinking about this often because with this uh, movie uh, in the 70s, the Jesus Revolution movie, I was thinking about how old I was when that all was taking place. And I thought, man, I had no clue any of it was going on. I had no clue there was even a Jesus re revolution. I had no clue that um, things were happening in California. I had, I had a little clue about the hippies because I had uh, bro older brothers and sisters. So I knew about the hippies. But I think, how could I go through that entire move of God, that entire new thing, and not have a clue? No idea. Wasn't a Christian and had no idea it was happening in the world. And we live in a time now, the same thing. This is a new move of God, and there's people that have no clue. And there will be people like me back in the 70s that will go through this whole thing and have no clue that God is on the move and have no clue about this third day, but not us. Because this one day when God wakes us up, he says we are the light. And so importantly now, we have to walk in it. And that's the key. is not just that we are the children of light that came from darkness. But now we have to walk in that light so that why? We're not who we used to be. A good example of this is in the Bible is in Acts chapter 9, Saul, Paul. We know that he got woken up, knocked down by a bright light. Again, that would do it to you. For Paul, it took him getting knocked to his feet to get his attention. It took that bright light. It took supernatural intervention to get his attention. And that's what God does to us. He gets our attention one way or another. And that's what he did with Paul. And I think what's interesting with Paul is, just like with us, when this light comes to us or we have a new revelation or we start this change, not everybody recognizes it. Not everybody really even cares, right? They don't recognize it, and they don't really care. And what I think is interesting about Paul is the minute he gets converted in Damascus, 
everybody's all like, whoa, this is so cool. Look at Paul. Paul saw this light, right? And all these things. But then he goes to Jerusalem. He's going to Jerusalem. Nobody wants anything to do with them. They said that when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. And Barnabas took him in and brought him to the apostles. So the other believers were like, whoa, I don't believe it. They didn't believe it. They weren't there in Damascus. They didn't see it happen. They didn't hear all the people. They didn't have the internet like now where they could have posted it. So they're not going to take his word for it, but who did? Barnabas did. Barnabas said, I'll, I'll take you. Let's go to the apostles. And that's kind of like it is today. People get transformed. People see the light, and they don't believe it. I don't believe that person could ever come to the Lord, or I don't believe that person could ever come to the Lord. And who's Barnabas? We're the Barnabas. <laughs> We're the ones that are going to take them in and bring them where they need to go. And so in this Ephesian scripture, he says we're children of light. And so I, he said, walk as children of life. And I put over this, how do we walk as children of light? For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So that's the first thing we have to be reminded about. And how do we do this? By finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But in all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. So and to walk as the children of God, we have to find what's acceptable to the Lord. And we're like, I've been a Christian forever. I know what's acceptable to the Lord. Well, then he proceeds to tell us. And many of these things we read about and that we read about in this chapter, we wouldn't necessarily say that we would do. But the one that really stuck out to me uh, this morning was covetousness. Sometimes we've got that little covetousness going. Well, what am I talking about? Well, sometimes it's just like, well, why does so-and-so get to pray for the basket and I don't? Right? Or why does this person have that and I don't? Just that little something that gets inside of us, that little dark spot or that dark area that God wants us to stay away from, that God wants us to live and to walk in this light. And so it's finding out what's acceptable to the Lord. And the other part of this is what's acceptable to the Lord for me and what's acceptable to the Lord for you may be different things. Because we have different callings, right? So the Lord's going to speak something different to me than he may be speaking um, to you. But he says, let those unfruitful work, uh, works, let them be exposed. And that's exactly what happens. And we know that's what's happening in this day, is the darkness is being exposed. So be careful, he says here. And I pulled this out of the New Living Testament because I really like how this reads. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts and giving thanks for everything to God. For the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and further submit to one another out of the reverence for Christ. A familiar scripture to us, but I like how this is brought in the New Living, Living Testament because he says, so be careful how you live. It says don't live carelessly. We know it's all about how we live in this day and how careful. And then it says don't be thoughtless. Sometimes we act before doing. Have you ever done that? Man, I should have thought about that before I did it. In Proverbs, the Bible tells us to ponder things. Think about them. Think about, and it says, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Sometimes I just do what someone else wants, right? And don't think about, why didn't I think that through? Didn't really think that through. So it's, those little things that the Lord is bringing out in us and showing us that this is a time that we need to do in order to live carefully, 
to live and do what the Lord is speaking to each and one of us individually and collectively, but more importantly, individually, is what does the Lord have for me to do? In the morning when I get up and I'm in my prayer time, okay, Lord, I'm available. What do you have for me to do today? And in Isaiah 42, it says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people and as a light to the Gentiles. And we know in this Bible verse, it's talking about Jesus. But we know as the first brother, uh, as, he's, as uh, we're part of Jesus and as we're his ministers on this earth, we know now that applies to us. And I like this. He's going to hold our hand. What well, do you need? Someone to hold your hand? Yeah, I need someone to hold my hand. We need sometimes someone to hold our hand. Why? Because maybe we're afraid. Maybe we're alone. Maybe we don't know what direction to go in. Or maybe it's to keep us safe. Whatever the reason God says to us this morning, I'm going to hold your hand. And I'm going to be with you. And you're not going to be alone. And I'm going to make you as a covenant for the people. When people see us, they know we're in covenant with the Lord. And that should make them feel uh, secure in the sense of, he says, I will give you as a light to the Gentiles. And we know that that's us. We're the light to the Gentiles. God is with us and we're the light. Very simple principle. Why are we sharing all this? We already know it. That's exactly why. <laughs> we need to be reminded of who we are. We really need to be reminded of who we are. We are children of the Most High God, but we are also children of the light. What does that look like and what does that mean? Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. And then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be signs and seasons, and for days and for years. So we know that in the natural, the first thing God uh, did was said, let there be light. So we know that first and foremost that God is that light. But I like in verse 14, he said, now let there be lights. And that's the same what he's speaking now. Why did they have the natural lights for the days and the times and the season? The other night, there was what they call the winter sky night. Have you seen some of the skies lately? We've that winter, that tells us that it's winter time. And that's how they used to tell the seasons and tell the days. Well, the Bible says if you want to understand something in the spiritual, it can be clearly seen in the natural. Well, we can clearly see when God created light. He gave us the moon, he gave us the sun, he gave us the stars. There's all these different kind of lights. And each light has a different purpose in the natural. And he does the same uh, for us. He says that we're those lights. He says, and Jesus spoke to him, he said, I am the light of the, of the, Lord, of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. How do we get the light of life? By following the Lord. So that light that's inside of us becomes our life force. It's interesting, I was thinking about light therapy. <laughs> Have you ever heard of light therapy? Light therapy is a real thing. And light therapy is something they use in the medical field, they say, to make you better from different psychological conditions. There's different cancers they treat. There's all kinds of things they use for light therapy. Well, there's our light therapy right there. <laughs> Jesus is our light therapy. He says, I am the light of the Lord, right, of the world. And so when we're feeling maybe a little down or we have something we need, where do we come? We come to Jesus because he's our light. And he has put his light inside of each and every one of us. And it's our life. It's our lifeline. He said, awake, you who sleep. Awake from the dead. We were dead. But now we're alive. We rise to walk in newness of life when we come to the Lord. And then in Matthew 7, it says, And he, they're talking about Jesus, was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as the light. And as I was thinking about this, I think it was uh, 
Peter, John, and I think, I believe it was James that were with him, and they saw this taking place. Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah, and he was transfigured, and I can just imagine this whole scene. But he said Jesus became white as the light, and I was thinking about all the different types of light. There are so many kinds of lights. Uh, back in the 80s, when I was involved with uh, our company, we were renovating the Fox Theater. Anybody ever been to the Fox Theater? It's a beautiful building. And we had the opportunity to renovate it. And so I remember walking in that building and thinking, wow, I had never been in there. And I remember thinking, whoa, this is really old. <laughs> really beautiful. But they said, you know what makes the Fox Theater really special in this time when it was made? is there is no direct lighting. It's all indirect lighting. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. What is an indirect light? So I saw there's everything was covered, all the lights. There was no direct on light on anything, and yet the building was bright. And I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about all the different kinds of lights. Now there's a white light and there's a yellow light, right? My mom has yellow lights. And she, now she wants white lights. So she wants us to take out all the yellow lights and put in white lights. Well, why do you want to switch the lights? They're not even burned out the bulb. Well, I can't see. They're not very bright. And we come to find out, well, it's because she has cataracts. She can't see the light, right? But she wants the white lights so that she can see because the white is brighter. There's LED lights, right? Those were a new thing. I remember going to the store, I had to get a light bulb for the light, and I said, are you kidding me? You used to go to the store and there'd be one or two light bulbs to pick from. Now there's a zillion of light bulbs to pick from. So you better take your light bulb to the store with you so you know which one to buy. Right? There's little lights, there's big lights, there's colored lights, all kinds of lights. And lighting is a big deal in the media as well. We're doing our Give Us This Day um, broadcasts, if you've got, anybody's watched those. And so as we record these, there's different lighting. And so i got to figure out, what am I going to wear? How's my hair? How's my this, that? Based on what? The lighting. And so you see, lighting makes a big difference. There's fluorescent lights. They said the number one thing that keeps people safe in, in, about home invasions are lights. The more light you have, the less likely somebody is to come into your house to break in. So there's those big fluorescent lights that shine, right? And they go on when somebody comes by your house. There's the lights that go on when it starts to get dark, those automatic lights that you can put in your lawn. And on and on and on we can go. What's the point? The point is we're the lights. So I know when I first came to the Lord, I was a floodlight. I was, a, I was one of those. I want to shine to everybody, tell everybody what, what's happened. Hopefully I'm still kind of like that. But there's other ones of us that were kind of indirect lights. Right? We're a little more chill. There are some that we change our lighting, depending. And this is the time God says that we're getting brighter and brighter and brighter. So we've got a dimmer switch. We've got to turn it up. God's telling us we've got to turn it up a notch. He wants us to be those bright lights. That's what he's doing in the scripture. They turned it up a notch. Those apostles of his, they didn't know what was going on. All they knew is they saw a bright light. That's how people are when they're by us. They don't know what's going on with us sometimes. But they see something in us. They feel something, right? What kind of light are we going to be? Something to think about. If I were to ask you what kind of light do you think you are? Are you a white light? Are you a yellow light? You have your dimmer switch. Is your light off? Does it go on and off? Are you a blinking light? If you watch the Lions game, they had all these blinking lights at the game, right? So it's something that God is making us aware of at this time, that this is a time that the light is becoming brighter and brighter and brighter as the darkness gets darker and darker and darker. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended. This is from Isaiah 20. He says, forever the Lord will be our everlasting light. It's not going to burn out. It's not going to go out. 
They say those LED lights last for, I don't know, 2,000 or 20,000 hours or whatever it is. Not Jesus. He lasts forever. Our everlasting light. And I love this because the days of your morning shall be ended. We have the light in us no matter what's going on in our life. No matter if we're in mourning or not mourning. God says that light is forever everlasting inside each and every one of us. And we know this Isaiah scripture says, Arise and shine, for what? Your light has come, and the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon us. That's forever. And in John 12, 36, While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. I put over this being sons of light versus being angels of light. Because what this Bible verse is sharing with us that Jesus was saying to them that you have to believe in this light in order to become the sons of light. So it's not just about obedience, which we've been learning about, but it's about faith. It's not just saying, okay, I've got saved, I got the light, I've got Jesus, but it's really now being able to say, no, I'm one of his sons. I'm maturing in this light now. I believe in this light. I'm going to walk as a son of God, and I'm going to walk as a son in the light, as opposed to this scripture in Corinthians that says, for such are false pro uh, apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to what? Their works. So we need to be careful. Like he was warning them. In this case, they were bragging and boasting, talking about all that and who they were. So there's a difference between the angels of light and the sons of light. And what is the difference? And how do we know the difference? It says right here, their works. That's why in this time, God says, we're sons of light. We have to walk like it. It's all about our walk. It's all about how we live. It's all about we, us becoming these sons of God and us becoming these sons of light so that we're not fooled and neither is anybody else. Because he says Satan himself can be a minister of light, but Satan can't walk in that light right like we can and so this is what he was encouraging them at the time is to believe it believe in that light and walk in that light and i love this one in romans 13 love does no harm to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law and do this knowing the time that now is is high time to awake out of sleep for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of what? Of light. Let us walk properly in this day, not revelry, drunkenness, not in the lewdness and lust and strife and envy. He says it's high time we awake and the salvation is nearer than it was before, which tells us this isn't just about being saved. This is about God's full salvation and us going on to that maturity and us putting on our armor of light. I love that. I know I've heard, we've read about in Galatians about putting on our armor of God, but what's an important piece of that armor is the light. I got up this morning knowing that I was going to quote this scripture and study this scripture and say, hey, this morning I put on my armor of light. I actually put the sweater on because my husband liked it. But <laughs> that's how we've got to be. I'm putting on my armor of light today, every day, and I'm keeping it on because my light's going to shine. My light's going to give me strength. My light doesn't make me afraid. I'm walking in the light. As much as you say to yourself, I'm a child of the Most High God, this morning God wants you to say, I'm a child of the Most High God, I'm a son of God, I'm a child of light, and I'm a son of light. As much as he knows who we are in God, he wants us to understand and know the power of the light living inside of us. 
that they are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, that you give them drink from the river and your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. God talks about the satisfaction and the fullness, just like we've been talking about the fullness of God. And he says, in your light, we see the light. That's the fullness for us. That's that satisfaction for us. The entrance of your words gives light. It's understanding the simple. I had somebody say to me the other day, well, I don't know if this such and such person uh, really is going to be able to understand the things of God because they're really simple. Well, what does this say? Your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. We need to be more simple. We get too complicated in our head, right? And here he's saying, no, it's the light that gives you that understanding. It's the light that gives you the truth. It's not about understanding here. It's about understanding here and letting that light live inside of you. And speaking of God's fullness, we know this scripture in uh, Luke 11. It says, therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. This is the Bible verse that says, if your eye is good, <clears throat> excuse me, if your eye is good, then your whole body will be good. So this is talking about, again, this fullness time. Not only your eye, but your ear and your mouth and your shoulder, right? He's giving this example of all of our body will be the fullness of light. And blessings that go with it, the Lord is the light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, on whom shall I be afraid? To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The other benefits of this light and being inside of us is, and we know this scripture, the Lord is the light and my salvation, whom shall shall I fear? We know that this is a time of fear. We've been talking so much about peace, but we know that it's also this light inside of us, that light therapy that fights against that anxiety in us and fights against that fear. I don't have to be afraid because the Lord is the light of my salvation and he gives light to those who sit in the dark place and he guides our feet to the way of peace. What a comforting scripture. When we think about these, this light this morning, and I know I've given you a lot of scriptures, and they'll be like, what is she talking about all this light, light, light? But the whole point of the whole thing that God says to us is I'm the light. And I want each one of you to walk in the light and to wake up. So if you're here this morning... And you need to get woken up. This is your wake-up call. They say, well, we don't want to be woke. We want to be woke. We want to be woke of the Lord. <laughs> right? So when I hear about being woke, that's what I'm going to think about. I'm going to think about us being this light. The Lord wakes us up to be the light this morning. And he wants not only for us to shine for others, but he wants it to develop in us. He wants those dark places in us removed. And it's not always the obvious thing that's in our life. Sometimes it's that little subtle thing. It's one little light that's been dimmed out or snuffed out. And it's so important for us at this time to come before the Lord as we get ready for our communion to come before the table of the Lord and be able to be open and honest and say, Lord, this is a time of darkness. We live in a time of darkness all around us. But you have not called us to darkness. You have called us to your light. You have put this light inside of us. I'm going to be one that's going to live in the light. I'm going to be a fluorescent. I'm going to be somebody who turns it up. Because I know this is a time where you're speaking to us and you're saying to us, it's time for the fullness. It's time for us to walk in what God has called each one of us to walk in as children of light, as his sons of light this morning.